As 2024 is approaching, we are reaching the time of seeing the Starship Lunar Lander in real life. Yeah, no kidding. This is totally feasible and Elon Musk also confirmed that we will return to the moon soon. Over the past year, SpaceX has conducted a series of tests on mock-ups of Starship Lunar Lander components as a way to show that progress on the HLS program is snowballing. Most notable among them is a big update on Starship HLS being revealed by NASA recently. Discuss everything about this in today's episode of TechMap. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and enable notifications to stay up to date with the latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode. The space community has always expressed excitement at the rapid development of Starship prototypes, typically in the case of Ship 28 and Booster 10, which will enter Starship Flight 3. Most recently, after the incident on December 21, Booster 10 quickly came back to the race with a static fire test of 33 Raptor engines on the 29. On the same day, Ship 28 entered its second static fire test following its first time on the 20. Ignition of a single Raptor engine on Flight 3 Starship demonstrating a flight-like startup for an in-space burn SpaceX updates on X. This means the latest Ship 28 test aimed to demonstrate engine startup during a flight in space. The ability is typically conducted to maneuver a rocket in space or control its direction during descent. If a rocket loses control during descent, it will be hard to predict its final destination. This test proceeded very similarly to a Ship 26 deorbit burn. However, an in-space burn just shows an engine startup in space after the engine has done the primary ignition and burn to take the vehicle to orbit. By contrast, a deorbit burn is an engine start specifically aimed at removing sufficient delta V that the spacecraft will enter the atmosphere. This hints that Ship 28 may go orbital and do a deorbit burn. These play an important role in demonstrating HLSE's capability in Artemis 3. Actually, NASA announced Test Ship 28's ability to refuel in orbit, a key part of the Artemis 3 program where Starship HLS will be loaded propellant from various tankers. To gear up for Artemis, in addition to testing HLSE's technologies in orbit, SpaceX also focuses on testing its components on the ground. However, few people feel the same way about Starship HLS, another variant of Starship. It's not because SpaceX is slow to develop this lunar lander version, but the information surrounding the progress is rarely public. And one of those rare pieces of information was unveiled recently, particularly on December 21 on NASA Marshall's X account. The post attached the image of Nicole Mann and Doe Wheels Wheelock, two NASA astronauts being on a subscale mock-up elevator. This one is a full-sized mock-up except for the height of the track and has more detailed hardware than anything we've seen before. The tweet said that these astronauts participated in a recent test of a subscale mock-up elevator for SpaceX's Starship human landing system that would be used for NASA's Artemis 3 and 4 missions to the moon. The demonstration allowed the astronauts to experience a flight-like design, offering valuable insights into both functionality and crew interaction. The Starship rocket is designed to handle anything SpaceX can throw at it with considerably more power and payload capacity than the company's Falcon 9 rocket. When freed from the super-heavy first stage, Starship is still 160 feet or 50 meters tall, and the crew compartment is near the top of the vehicle. So, Starship HLS needs an elevator to take astronauts from the nose down to the lunar surface. SpaceX built a prototype of the planned HLS elevator at its facility in Hawthorne, California, it features a full-scale basket with functioning mechanical components and controls. The astronauts, Nicole Mann and Doe Wheels Wheelock, wore spacesuits that approximated the movement range and mobility the crew could expect on the lunar surface. The astronauts provided crucial feedback on various aspects, including elevator controls, gate latches, ramp deployment, interfaces, cargo space, and dynamic operations along the vertical rail system. The elevator's role in supporting crew members during moonwalks and ensuring a smooth transition between the lunar surface and Starship's habitable zone is pivotal for the success of the Artemis missions. When the actual mission rolls around, the crew will have new advanced spacesuits developed by Axiom Space, but those aren't ready yet. Actually, this is not the first time the elevator image has appeared. Back in February 2021, 
SpaceX, along with two left competitors, showed off their assembled low-fidelity mock-ups. At that time, under the Human Landing System program, NASA selected three providers, a Blue Origin-led consortium, Dynetics, and SpaceX, to build prototypes and compete for one or two follow-on contracts back in April 2020. SpaceX's Starship offering was deemed the riskiest solution, and the company received a middling $135 million, while Dynetics is roughly $250 million and the national teams is about $570 million. Despite being the least funded, SpaceX made the impression the most. In the 10 months since SpaceX received its $135 million, the company built no less than eight full-scale Starship prototypes, performed a dozen or more wet dress rehearsals and static fires with said prototypes, and performed two powered hops and two high-altitude test flights. Now, to add to that list of low-cost achievements, SpaceX also built and tested a functioning prototype of the elevator Starship in a short period of time, which would be used to lift and lower astronauts to and from the lunar surface. The photo shows an elevator prototype situated inside a steel Starship ring with the sky visible. Meanwhile, in the same period and with an investment amount six times higher, guess what NASA got from the two best-funded teams? As far as I know, the space agency received only paperwork, a few completed design reviews, and two low-fidelity mock-ups, mostly made out of cardboard, foam, and wood. In the end, what was the result? In April 2021, in a surprise move that was dictated by budget constraints, NASA awarded $2.89 billion to SpaceX alone for the development of its Starship Super Rocket as a lunar landing system for astronauts, leaving out Alabama-based Dynetics as well as a team led by Amazon founder Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin Space Venture. Not that enough. Fast forward to November 2022, Elon Musk's space company continued to win contract modification to further develop its Starship human landing system, serving for Artemis IV scheduled in 2027. With the presence of the lunar lander's full-sized elevator mock-up, the HLS team appears to want to emphasize one more time their fast pace in gearing up for Artemis III targeted in December 2025. Obviously, the closer the Artemis III's deadline is, the more activities about the program are public. On August 2023, the media recorded the emergence of distinctive white-nosed cones that experts believe represent mock-ups of the HLS Starship variant R marked for meticulous testing. They stand out by containing life support components, signifying swift strides in critical testing protocols and a leap forward in the developmental timeline. At the same time, SpaceX also completed engine tests for NASA's Artemis III moon lander, Given that, the company demonstrated a vacuum-optimized Raptor's performance through a test that successfully confirmed the engine can be started in extreme cold conditions resulting from extended time in space. Entering 2024, SpaceX would conduct a propellant transfer demonstration in Starship Flight 3. Both NASA and SpaceX view off-Earth propellant transfer as a key enabler of bold exploration feats, such as the establishment of crewed outposts on the Moon and Mars. That's a step toward the envisioned operational strategy, which will involve voyaging Starship vehicles rendezvousing with tanker variants in Earth orbit. Talking about the current speed of the program, Amit Kshatriya, Deputy Associate Administrator for the Moon to Mars program in the Exploration Systems Development Mission Directorate at NASA headquarters gave compliments to the HLS team. We have a couple of team members in the HLS program that are engaged with the FAA and SpaceX. I mean, they're very, very good. And so they understand kind of how to incorporate their data. They're working through a leak and boil off and how that affects the kind of propellant aggregation phase of the mission. So I don't want to go too far down the road in terms of, you know, talking about that until they settle on their engineering side, added Kshatriya, adding work is well underway on the crew version of Starship per a reference to the life support system. SpaceX is an integral partner. I spent 12 hours with the team at Hawthorne and got to see what's going on there. I mean, in terms of Raptor production and all their environmental control and life support system and other development for Starship, I will tell you is that we, NASA, are fully partnered with them in terms of how they're interpreting the data. I'm very confident that SpaceX is open to our input and conversely. To be honest, the progress of a project not just comes from the human aspect, but also from infrastructure.
Providing the launch site modifications allows for a pad turnaround without the requirement for a lengthy period of repairs, SpaceX could potentially launch multiple flights from Starbase in 2024 as SpaceX expected. By then, the Starship HLS prototype could be tested in real flights like the way they did with Starship. That is the reason why I can be pretty sure that in the next year, the space community will take the chance to see a real-life Starship HLS. And that just about wraps it up for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification feature so you don't miss any space important updates. Your support is our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you and we look forward to seeing you next time.